How's it going everyone? My name is Miguel Fuentes and I'm the uh, campus pastor of Freedom Campus at Project Connection, sorry, Project Connect Online Church. And uh, today, you know, I'm going to be talking about abiding in Christ. I think that it is very, very important as believers, if, we, if we're if going to, you know, doing something big <clears throat> for the kingdom of God. I believe that personally that we ought to abide in Christ and, and to abide in his words. Uh, you know, I think that one of, one of the main reasons why we got to do this is that, you know, the world's getting darker. I don't know about you, but the world's getting darker by the minute. And so, um, before we get started, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, 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 there, there is power in your name. Lord, we understand that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you will come and fill us up with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you will teach uh, teach us, Lord, how to be uh, abiding in you and your words. Lord, I pray that you will show us through your eyes, Lord. I pray that you would give us strength, Lord, during 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 the time of weakness, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to uh, share your word and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask right now, Lord, we as we get into your word, I pray that I pray that that people will be blessed by this teaching. I pray that people will be equipped by this teaching. And uh, we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Man. <clears throat> As I was worshiping uh, a few, uh, well, actually a couple minutes ago, um, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was worshiping the Lord. And and God really touched my heart about this is that to be a born again believer requires us to to not only share his love to others, but also we got to understand that yeah, people will hate us because we serve Christ. And yet one of the things that he taught me, not only as a pastor, but as a brother in the Lord. Is that we always got to abide in Christ, no matter what situation that we are in, no matter if we are in a communist country that are you know, strictly all religion, but uh, all religion, you know, ban and stuff, and, and 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 I know that the kingdom of God is not religious in a sense. But 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 I understand that the kingdom of God is at hand, amen. And so I think you know I think that the the reason why we we go through this trial tribulation is that God wants us to uh, push to you know to to push outside of our limits and to and to understand that yes you know we we we'll be persecuted because of Christ, but we always. Got to understand that we cannot lose our faith because of persecution. So, so uh, yeah. So let's just a little rant, but let's get into the text here. Uh, turn with me in John chapter fifteen. Now, now I'm going to be reading in two different translations. I'm going to be reading from the modern English version, which is one of my favorite versions. And the Passion Translation. So, let's go ahead and read. I am, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch is, yeah, every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean through the word 
which I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain uh, in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Unless it remains in the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can't do nothing. If a man does not remain in me, he is thrown out as a branch and withered. And they gathered them and throw into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my word remains in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, so, so you will be my disciples. Okay. Let's read through the Passion Translation. Let me read what it says. <clears throat> and it reads, I am a true springing vine in the father, sorry, in the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He came for the branches, sorry, he cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and proffering up the fruitless branches and prune every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you, so you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life um uh Im imminently joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine, you are my branches. As you live in union with me as a as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you, but when you live separately from me you are powerless. Whew. If a person is Separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully in you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my my mature disciples who glorify my father. Man, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I love that. <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me read verse 7 again. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. Whew. Man, that's good. That's good. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that it is important to to abide in Christ. Now, the Word says that we cannot do this alone. And this is why. Uh, you know, as a landscaper for four years, you know, you got to understand that um, some branches are dying off or withered away. Maybe because of lack of nutrients, maybe a lack of water, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we dig the hole too deep and it flooded and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the shrubs begin to wither because they are drowning. Um, 
And so, and so, you know, it's very, very important to understand this concept. And yeah, you know, sometimes I gotta cut off a dead branch, uh, a dead branch, uh, and and maybe it may produce new branches. And so, I think that it's very, very important to understand that yes, uh, it is very crucial to to abide in the vine, and. Uh, now, in last game turn, the vine is some sort of weed, and so we got to rip it off out of out of the shrubs because it looks bad and stuff. And so, I understand what Jesus is saying, not through the translation, but through the Holy Spirit. And so, I believe personally that God wants us to stay in Christ. God wants us to be. Life union, as the present translation call it, to to really abide in Him, to to have uh, what's called uh, intimacy with Christ. That's why that's why we call it the, the the bride of Christ, because we are trying to, not trying to, but but to live out a life of holiness, to live out a life of of fruitfulness. Through the Spirit of God, and also through uh, you know walking in righteousness by the Holy Spirit, you know God, uh, you know I don't know I, I don't know about you, but I believe personally God wants us to be fruitful in every area in our lives. Doesn't matter if it's our job, doesn't matter if it's our marriages, doesn't matter if it's our relationship. Doesn't matter if it's uh, business, life, in, in general. God wants us to be fruitful, but we can't produce fruit unless we abide in Christ. Because you cannot do this alone. You, you, even Jesus says, you cannot, you know, if you are not in me, you cannot do anything. And that uh, you just be a dead branch, and that uh, you... and and they will cut you off, then throw it to the lake of fire. Amen. So number two, the testimony of abiding in Christ. And you know, well, when I was a uh, a newly Christian uh, back in the day, I learned so much about you know uh, about having the identity in Christ, learning how to abide in Christ, learning how to read the Word on my own, and to study the Word on my own. And God began to show me things through the Scripture like never before. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, you know, even mature Christians will give me some type of encouragement or some type of tip to better my relationship with the Lord. And so, you know, I began to worship Him. I began to pray on my own in a prayer closet. I uh, began to um, uh, pray, praying for others, um, reading the Word, studying the Word on my own. And, uh, th you know, throughout the years, I began, you know, Becoming more mature, uh, I started to do local mission trip works uh, in downtown Raleigh, and I began to pray for people. I began to feed people, you know, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and all that stuff. And it was a blessing. I learned a lot. Now there's there's some demonic, you know, possessed person once in a while, but we prayed against that demonic spirit. To leave this woman out, uh, to be delivered, and it was powerful. It was shaky. Uh, who was my first encounter with a demon possessed woman? And boy, uh, God showed me a lot. Uh, we we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That's the only thing that in my mind, because we know for a fact that. You know, we we live in a society where murders are happening. We see children are being sex trafficked through uh, pedophiles. Uh, it's very, very sad to see little children, boys and girls, being molested 
either with women, transgender, or with men. And it saddens me to see that happening. We see uh, more of the, uh, the Supreme Court cases are now legalizing homosexual marriages. We've seen the uh, you know uh, Roe versus Wade, and I'm praying for that you know that that turnaround basically to bring back the prayers in school, to bring back Bibles in schools and stuff like that. And you know I'm praying for that to happen. I pray for a supernatural revival coming in America, where people will come to repentance. And people will start taking God seriously, and then walking with Him because that that's on my heart, man. Uh, you know, God wants us to get serious with Him because if 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 we are playing church all the time, you know, we're, we're not taking it seriously. We we are a laughing stock of the world. And if, if and, and and if we are like in the book of Acts, where um, when when Paul went to uh, Ephesus, and there's a lot of witchcraft in that in that city, to the point where Paul preached the gospel, and every Christians burned their magic spell books, burned their uh, idol trees and stuff like that, and made a big bonfire. And stop worshiping uh, Diana. Um, and the whole city change. You know, and, and I'm praying for that to happen. Amen. I'm praying where we're where we're sinners having a uh, personal encounter with Jesus, and that to the point that they repent and change their lives and to be born again into the kingdom of God. That's big. That is big, and and I'm praying that the Lord, that 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 it will happen at some point. And so my last point I want to make is that it is time to abide in Christ in His words, and in in just a few minutes we're 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 going to pray for for the next five ten minutes for things to happen. Because I believe personally, you know, God is going to be awaking a lot of people up to, to, to see the truth of the gospel, to see the truth of, of his word. Um, and and I'm, I'm just feeling in my spirit, man. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just really, really, really on fire for the Lord. Like never, like never before. You know, I know I need to repent of some things in my in my personal life, but man, God is just waking me up and seeing the truth in my personal life. And you know, maybe the Lord is showing you some things in your personal life as well. I think that it, this is the the. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. I don't know about you, but maybe somebody is struggling with their marriage. Um, I don't know if somebody is in the middle of divorce or 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 they're arguing a lot of times. A lot of fighting between husband and wife. I'm, you know, I'm just praying that the Lord will restore marriages. I'm praying that the Lord will restore relationships. I think the only way that we can see what's going on is that we we we, we stop the enemy of what they are doing. And we pray against the enemy. I prayed against the these demonic spirits that destroy marriages. I, I just felt that in my heart right now. 
I don't know about you, let you know, let's let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we come to you humbly before you, Father. Lord, we ask of you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we invite you in our hearts. Lord, we recognize that we are in such a big mess. Lord, we realize that we need a fresh, uh, a, a, a fresh awakening of some sort, Lord, that, that you are waking us up to see the truth of your word. And Father, we ask of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray that you would break every chain, break every yoke of bondage. Lord, I pray that you would plead the blood of Jesus over our lives and over our hearts and, o and over our minds. Lord, we ask of you that you would stir in our hearts, Father, to pray for others. Not just praying for ourselves, but to pray for others, Lord. Lord, we recognize that, yes, we, we are messed up people, Lord. But, Lord, we realize that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And that, Lord, we know that we are facing a, 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 a terrible... Um, how to say a, a terrible, um, tragedy among marriages, Lord, that we seeing divorces in Christian homes, Father, and Lord, we pray that that the power of God just restore their marriages, Lord. I pray in in the name of Jesus, Lord, that that you would give us hope, that you would give us peace. During persecution. That you would give us peace. During trials and tribulations. Lord that we know that we serve a big God Father. We serve the Almighty. We serve the God of, 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 uh, of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Lord we realize Lord that. Lord you fix every situation that we are in. By your wisdom Lord. And we th Lord we are thankful that you are here with us. Lord, we are thankful that you never leave us alone. Lord, we are thankful, uh, sorry, we are thankful, Father, that you, that you stay with us, that, that you are the finisher, sorry, you are the author and finisher of our faith, Lord. Lord, you have been with us through trials and tribulations, Lord, and we praise you, God, because our praise is our battle cry. And we we thank you for all that we have. Lord, we thank you that 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 you give us wisdom to fix a solution that we cannot fix. God, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that Lord, that you are, you, Lord, you, you are the only way, Father. And we ask that those who are lost will come to you, Jesus. I pray that you will visit them in their dreams, and that they will be awakened, and they will seek out you, Lord. And that they will be born again, once again. And we praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord, in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but man, that stirred my heart hard. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great week so far. Until next time, I'll see you guys again. See you later.